Sorry, you know what's so funny? I was like, wait, my headphones. And then I'm like, nope, don't nope. need them. <laughs> I don't know what about the headphones makes you feel like a podcaster. Secure and podcasty. Yeah. yeah. No, of course. Welcome back to the Drew's News Podcast, where we're giving you all the fun, quirky, inspiring, and yes, informative stories well, that exist in the world. And this week, I have such a fun co pilot, who is the queen of TikTok and Sirius XM radio. I was lucky enough to be on the first show. I called in and surprised you. It's the incredible Tinks. She's here. Thank you so much for having me back. Did you really not know I was going to call in? No, I had no idea. And I didn't even recognize your voice. I was trying to stay so present in the moment. And then I realized it was you and I felt very calm and comforted. And it set me off on a great course for my first show. So thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. It's great. I love the advice you give to people. It's so calming and rational and sort of like how to ex- extract the drama yeah. out of things. And I feel like that is something that even when we don't realize we're feeding off of it or yes. we think we don't want to feed off of it, somehow we're still nibbling away. Yeah, I think I think that I'm all about just making things easier on ourselves. And sometimes all we have to do to make something easier is just label it or acknowledge it. Okay, that's my ego. Okay, that's a little jealousy going on. And that just de-escalates the situation and makes you remember, I'm just human. I'm just reacting to this situation. I know. My friend, Aliza uh, Pressman, who has, Dr. Aliza Pressman, who has a podcast uh, and a whole sort of, you know, franchise called Raising Good Humans. And she says this, and it applies to children, but she purposefully named it Raising Good Humans so that it would be applicable to adults as Mm -hmm. well. And she says, all feelings are valid. All behaviors are not. I love that. Isn't that so good? I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just about acknowledging your feelings sometimes. And if they're not, you know, they're valid, but you don't always have to let them overpower you. Yes. Tings, why don't we get into some stories? Let's I do love it. your thoughts and opinions on things. The number one story, uh, Pete Davidson removed his Kim Kardashian-inspired tattoo. He was spotted on a movie set recently with a bandage on his neck right where his in quotations, my girl is a lawyer ink resided. What are your thoughts about tattoo removal, being spontaneous and putting a tattoo on, you know, early? There's sort of a legendary myth about this. You know, what are your, what is, what does Tinks think? I, well, you know, I have some personal experience. I have I have a new boyfriend and he got my initials on his arm. Wait, what? Yeah. And what was your response? Um, well, I I I mean, I think initially I was I no, I'm really flattered. It's it's flattering, it's exciting, but it's early. I mean, we're we're like we're like seven weeks in. So I Whoa. Mm, yeah. So it's a little bit early, but I, I'm I'm so thankful to Pete for reminding us that tattoo removal is an option, should we get to that point. Not that I not that I'm putting that out there, but I, you know, it's it's an option, which is good. <laughs> Nothing is permanent <laughs> apart from taxes. <laughs> By the way, it's so true. Even my 10-year-old daughter, Olive, um, I said something about a tattoo and she said, you know, well, you could just always have it removed. And I said, no, that's not how tattoos work. That's the <laughs> irony of a tattoo. It's permanent and forever. And she goes, no, people have tattoos removed all the time. Smart. And She's smart. <laughs> I think this generation, um, because remember when like Johnny Depp got Winona forever? yeah. And then you changed it to like wino. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was such Hollywood. I mean, people I know. were obsessed. Oh, they could not stop talking about it. Yeah. And I feel like for a Pete, it's sort of the opposite. Like it feels. It doesn't even matter anymore. Casual. No, yeah. Like, oh, he wanted to convey his love yeah. for Kim Kardashian. They've since separated. He's moving on and changing things up a little bit. Like nothing about this seems taboo or shocking the way it was with Johnny Depp back in the decades ago. I know. I agree. And I think it's just because everything feels a little bit less like rock and roll these days. Like everything feels a little bit more planned out. Like when Johnny Depp did it, there was no social media. He wasn't taking an Instagram of Winona Forever and putting it on his Instagram. Like he didn't think it was going to be out there in the way that it was. Whereas I think now we do things a lot for 
Instagram, for social media, for TikTok, for that. So not saying at all that's why Pete did it. Very happy for him and his choice either way. But I just think that we're more um, kind of socially driven in, in terms of what we do. I, I, I don't know Pete Davidson at all. Um, I don't even know if I've been around him and I feel like I would remember because he's mm-hmm. a very dynamic person. Mm-hmm. I- I'm making a wild guess here. He seems like someone who really knows how to let himself fall in love. A hundred percent cosign on that idea. Yes. <laughs> he, I think he, I think he like likes it. Like I think he really and I and I admire that Me so too. much. Like I, I'm kind of like that too, where I'm like, let's go for it. Like I, I live to fall in love. I don't even mind about the heartbreak. It's fine. I'll take the good with the bad. And he goes for it. I know. And by the way, every woman that has been with him, Kate Beckinsale, mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian, Ariana. they all talk about how wonderful he is. I know. There's not a bad word about him on I the know. street. And I know a few people who have worked with him and they're like, no, he is the greatest. He seems like the nicest guy. All of the women that he's been with talk about how kind he is, yes. which is like the best adjective to describe a man is kind. And he's just a sweetie. And I think he's like, he got the tattoo. They broke up. No big deal. He had a good experience. I'm actually surprised that he removed it. Me too, because, because he is covered also head yeah. to toe into tattoos. And like, again, never been around him. He seems amazing, but he seems like the type of guy who would be like, you know what? That was a chapter in my life, and this is a reminder of it, and that's happy. And, you know, I'm surprised. But maybe, you know, maybe it's just an aesthetic decision. Maybe it, like, <laughs> you know, maybe it was too hard for him to look at it. It was making him sad in the yeah. mirror. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, I, Pete Davidson, we wherever you. you are out there, <laughs> you don't even know this podcast is happening right now. Maybe you know Tinks, but we just, I think women celebrate and champion a guy who is not afraid to love yeah. and fall yeah. and express it and show it. And everyone who knows him seems to speak nothing but his praises. So, you're here, Pete Davidson. <laughs> okay, our next topic. Venus Williams recently said that she's working on her dating life by changing herself. Mm. She told Glamour UK, I have had a single life for a long time, and I think it's really easy to get stuck in a single life and sometimes, at least for me, harder to get out of it. It makes you think about yourself and what you want and how to behave. It's definitely a lot of self-thought, and that's what goes into it. Thoughts. Yeah. I I love that. First of all, I was with Venus last week. And no, she actually, no, yeah, you weren't. Yeah, how crazy. She gave me a little tennis lesson. There was an event and um, <laughs> it was wild. So um, she's the coolest, most magnanimous person that like I've ever met. Like just so nice, like didn't have to be that kind to everybody and was just like, no, you hold the tennis racket like this, Tinks. And I was like, okay, whatever. Wow. So that's first thing. Second thing, I love this strategy. This is something that I always tell my community because – I think it really starts with you. It starts with you and you have to be in love with yourself. Sounds so cheesy, eye roll, whatever, before you can invite someone to love you. And, you know, if she's feeling like she was stuck in a single rut, which I totally also understand because I'm like the middle of the bed person, like don't want to share, stuck in my ways, whatever, whatever. If she felt like she needed to do some self-work before she can attach herself to someone, that's the most beautiful, unbelievable thing. I think it's a great strategy. I was one of those people. I I didn't eye roll when people said you got to love yourself in order to love others. I wanted to scream, light the rim on fire and Mm -hmm. tear everything apart. Mm -hmm. I was so irritated and angry with people Mm -hmm. when they said, well, you can't love others unless you love yourself. I'm like, just stop it with your (laughs) woo-woo, (laughs) self-indulgent, you know, I can't even listen to you right now. I am the, if everyone is happy, then I am happy. That's when I'm calm. And for the first time in my life at 47, I've spent seven years single and I get it now. Yeah. I have never been in a relationship with myself. I've never put myself first. I've never given enough time to be with myself, to mm-hmm. get to know myself in this way. Yeah. 
Um, and I, maybe that's not a younger journey. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I can't believe how stubborn I was and I, I wish I wasn't, I, I don't know if, you know, I would have been a different person and I can't yeah. turn back time. So yeah. I don't want to be disgruntled about my past that I can't change. But now is when I'm like, oh my God, it's not nice guys finish last. It's nice guys should finish first. Yeah. Why didn't I take more time to get to know myself, yeah. love myself, yeah. understand what I needed, more importantly, what I didn't need? Right. I think the best thing that's come out of being single is not what I need, is now knowing what I don't need. Yeah. And I did not know these things when I was younger. Yeah. I really didn't. Everyone has their own journey. Maybe you weren't, you were doing other things. You weren't ready to have this experience with yourself. And now, and now you are. And Everybody has their own time in their life where they take a couple of years and they're like, I'm going to fall in love with myself. And sometimes it's not even planned. It's on accident. You look up and you, like you're saying now and think, wow, I've had this time and this space to really get to know myself, think about what I like, think about what I don't like, and more importantly, what you deserve and what, you know, knowing your worth and dating and what you want to call into your life. And now you're golden. I really enjoyed imprinting on people. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed like 50 percenting myself and then adapting the other person's Mm -hmm. 50 Mm percent. Like two halves make a whole. Yeah. One love. I couldn't feel more differently now. I'm like, oh God, two individuals. (laughs) Yeah. A love that may meet somewhere, but needs to go back to its own corners. Yeah. And now what I found fascinating about what Venus said is that she said, I feel stuck in being single. And I guess some advice tinks, like I do feel a little now almost that I've overcompensated. Yeah. And now I am too happy being single. How do I or a Venus or people who have dared to have a relationship with themselves for a long period of time, how do you put the toe in the water? How do you get out of that? How do you open yourself up Again. Again, now from this new place of self-worth. Yeah. It's an interesting question. And I think I've been there too. I I really, I really get stuck in being single because I love it. And I know that's weird to say, but I really enjoy being single. I, I can make myself happy. I, I like my job. I like my friends. But I think it's just honestly keeping an open heart and not not even looking for it. Again, and I'm speaking all in cliches today, but just being open to the possibility of meeting someone and just just being open because I think you'll find now coming from this new place after you've done all this work on yourself, things might feel different and more exciting. But all you have to do is just stay open. Another open thing that is really kind of, I'm just having this moment right now talking to you, this revelation of like, we will take so little. We will accept less. We will take the crumbs and the morsels yeah. and make a meal out of it when it comes to what someone will give you yes. and the lack thereof and we'll just eat it up and then if somebody comes with an abundant dish and all of this availability it's like we literally go oh god what's that that's yeah. too much what's yeah. wrong with him or them or her or like and then what's wrong with me that i can't accept that that has been a really interesting thing that i could sort of be starving and convince myself I was full. And if someone comes at me with fullness, I feel like I'm not hungry. Right. And I, that is crazy It's to crazy. Me. It's crazy. That's, that's a lot of young dating life that we have to kind of uncondition ourselves because it's so true. I don't know why we get in this pattern where when someone comes with an open heart and open arms and it's like, hey, I have like all of these things to give you. You're like, whoa. I know. Like, whoa. Like I've been, especially if you're in the zone of what you are and where I kind of like live a lot of the time, which is like, I can take care of myself. I'm good. I'm good. And then someone's like, you're awesome. Like, let me just give you all these things. You're like, whoa. Like, why do you, why do you want to give them to me? Like, why are you being so open? with, you know, but that's what I mean when I say keep an open mind and open heart, because it's just, it's nice to be wanted and it's nice to, to have someone be kind to you and to just show you love. And once you get over that initial like ick or whatever, it can be really beautiful. So the hope is that all of the self-work and all of the really loving yourself, 
w- if you just push through, then that will click in and you'll say, this is actually what I deserve is someone with a full dish. I think you also, when you're hungry and you're trying to feed yourself and that other person isn't really there, you're constantly working and doing so much. Mm-hmm. And maybe the idea is to stop trying so hard and allow things to flow a little bit yeah. more and, you know, just, I think open heart, open mind also means a little acceptance, yeah. a little calmness, a little um, not overreacting or overcompensating, yes. maybe like seeing what happens. Yeah. Just kind of like a, what I call a will see mentality. Like, oh, you know, okay. like, it, because I think we kind of as humans, we always want to be like, okay, well, this is this and this, that. But, yep. you know, okay, you meet someone. They're kind of interesting. We'll see. And that's exciting. It's like a little smirk. It's the emotional equivalent of a little like, okay, we'll see. We'll see mentality. Trust me. It's a really good thing. Tinksy, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back after this break to answer the burning questions you submitted for Tinks. I can't wait to hear this. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Our next story, relationship therapist Emily Jamia posted on TikTok the five key things that every couple should avoid if they want their romance to last. She suggested that couples wait at least a year to get married, always prioritize sex, and continue to have date nights years down the line. She also advised against schlepping around in sweatpants all day, every day, and not following outdated rules like a man has to be the first one to make a move. Those are five very strong points of view. Tink's thoughts. I I agree with them. I think that's right. I think apart from maybe the sweatpants one, because oh, I, I know, I know. I, look. They, yeah, see, <laughs> there you go. I, I'm a sweatpant lover and I, I kind of am, am like of the thought that if you are going to be together, then you're going to see me in sweatpants a lot. I got <laughs> stuff to do. I got more important things on my mind than my pants. So apart from that, I think it's really important. I love the date night one because I think especially if it's two busy people and it's I've totally fallen into that trap before where I'm like, well, it's just busy. Let's just order in. Let's just like or let's just eat in bed and like go to bed and like whatever, whatever. Oh, my God. And I'm like a slob. Yeah. I'm like a bed liver. I'm like just to eat the eat in bed go to bed like we have to get up in the morning and I've fallen into that trap before and it's and, and well, it's nice to have sex to your right yeah. there it's just like nice a one-stop shop yeah very Remember, easy I still love and think about all the time the George Costanza can I eat a sandwich and have sex at the same time <laughs> yeah exactly and Which he like, really tries it seems like he kind, kind of accomplishes of, yeah. it yeah almost I I have I, I haven't tried but I but I would you know I would I, it wouldn't be a sandwich for me it would be like sushi so that might be like logistically difficult, but I digress. I <laughs> prioritizing sex is important. So important. You got to keep it. You got to carve out time for that. I co-sign on everything apart from the sweatpants. It's, you know what? I know. I think, I think, you know, the athleisure wear is too ubiquitous for that one. Yeah. You know, it's too on trend. I feel like that it worked in a bowler hat era. I also like to be in sweatpants so that I can like surprise and delight when I do put on pants. Otherwise, it's more one note. You know, I'm yep. like, I don't, you never know what you're going to get with me. Am I am I a sweatpant goblin or am I like going to a red carpet event? You spin the dice like, woo. I know. And it's nice to have that range. I'm really just showing my range. I also had two kids, and I don't think there's anything more uncomfortable on planet Earth than jeans. I don't know why, but, like, if I was to wear a medieval chastity belt, I'm convinced it'd be cozier than a pair of Levi's. Jeans are an absolute war crime. I don't wear them anymore. I don't associate with them. They're not made for people with hips. I'm sorry. It's, It's literally an industrial material that we have made a cornerstone of American fashion. Why? Why? I'm sorry. What? And they're so cute. I love the look of denim. I I see girls in jeans, men in jeans. I look more like a man in jeans. <laughs> That's also where I'm so I don't want to look like a yeah. man in jeans. You know how like girls have that cute like indented flat front yeah. and guys have the bulge? I have the bulge. I have the bulge too. Yeah. I I listen, I have a very long torso. They're just not meant for for my body type and I don't. I especially the no stretch. It's too painful. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better yeah. cuz I used to wear nothing but jeans and now it's like 
if I literally try to stuff myself into a pair, <laughs> just trust me, I'm not comfortable. I may look cuter, but I'm miserable. Um, you asked, and now we're answering. In our first podcast edition of Ask a Desk Pert, <laughs> like it's like expert with a desk. Yeah. So it's like. But I have a list. So, same, sister. Okay, good. Thank God. No jeans <laughs> at a list. They cancel, we, our lists cancel each other out. So actually, we don't have one on this pod. All right. <laughs> so it's like desks. No, because it's S's for me too. So this is. <laughs> well, and it's D E S K P E R T. So desk spurt. Desk spurt. <laughs> See, thank you. I'm like, I'm convinced we should just come up with a new name for this because I can't say it. You like hearing me be a fool? All right. Tinks and I will do our best to give you all some advice. Our first question comes from at Yeti Climb. If unsuccessful on a dating app, what are your suggestions of other ways to meet people? I love a setup. I love a setup. And I think that people think that it's cringe or embarrassing to ask to be set up. And I I think that your friends are the greatest untapped resource. And maybe not like your best friends because, you know, they would have thought of it already. I'm talking about the friends you see once a month or maybe even a, your favorite colleague at work. Just ask them. It's People love to be asked for little favors. It makes them actually like you more. It's been proven. Ask your friend and say, hey, I'm trying to put myself out there more. Do you have anyone to set me up with? Doesn't matter if they're not the love of my life. Just someone fun to get a drink with. Take the pressure off. I'm telling you, it's a great way to do it. And ask like 10 people. People need to put effort into dating. Like it's a numbers game. You have to ask like 10 people. You'll go on two dates. One of them will be good. Oh, my God. I love this. Mm -hmm. The last time someone suggested that they introduced me to someone, it was they hooked me up um, like via text with uh, <laughs> someone they knew, he was a crew rower, which oh, I thought, or like a teacher. Yeah, like he it, he wasn't like he he was he was a teacher. Okay, um, <laughs> he wasn't like some twenty something year old. Okay. Um, and um, I I did I texted with him and I was like, ooh, cool crew, that's interesting, <laughs> but. I said, like, when are you going to be in town? And then it just, like, it just fizzled. It fizzled. Yeah. 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 So I think that you have to make the plan right away. Like, it's nice to get to know someone a little bit, but I'm like, I need to get in front of you, smell your pheromones, yeah. and, like, hear your laugh, you know? Because that's all the chemistry thing. I I'm going to double down on what you said. Okay. So I want to put your comment front and center, which is reach out to your friends and ask to be set up. Ask at least 10 people. Like, like really go for it. Put yourself out there. People love to be needed yeah. and they love to sort of rise to the occasion. Yeah. It's inspiring. It's not a burden. No, it's nice. I love setting people up. I have a marriage under my belt that I set up. I have a couple of relationships that I've set up. I love it. And people love love. Like what could be better than, you know, I think it's exciting and it's fun. I so, love it. And then I will back that up because the one time it did happen to me, texting is the biggest blocker it on is, the planet. It is. it is just yeah. a road to nowhere most of the time. Not mm -hmm. all the time, but I think the majority is please don't get caught in a texting flight pattern. No pen pals. You may never <laughs> land that plane. No pen pals. Thank you. All right. Question number two is from at YDoc James. Question, how do you handle an ex that has the same friend group? Mm, that's tricky. That's tricky. That's why I like to date outside of my friend group because I'd like a nice clean break. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you have to be respectful and kind of set expectations when the breakup happens. Like all you can really do is be kind and respectful. Is it going to be a little awkward? Yeah. And I think accepting that is the first step. And then it's just about, you know, really being kind to that person. I think I'm very into like the amicable breakup. And I'm not saying you have to be best friends with them and sit next to them at the group dinner, but be kind, smile, ask them how they are. Like this is someone who you spent time with, you are in a relationship with. And and if you set that tone, they will follow suit because they're going to look like an if they are rude to you or passive aggressive in front of the rest of your friends. Smile, be nice, move it, move it along. Tinks, I love it. Take the high road. Yeah. 
And you do set the tone. Yeah. And I really empathize with people out there who feel like I just lost my love and my support yes. group. Mm -hmm. it, all feelings are valid. All behaviors are not. You should feel that way. 100%. It's like it's too much. It's, it's like I've lost my lover and my friend and your group. friends all in one. Yeah. You couldn't feel more isolated, alone, and like deeper into heartbreak. I cannot empathize more. Yeah. I still go with your notion of please act kind and respectful. Yeah. And it's not probably the best idea to play dirty, go below the belt, mm -mm. behave nasty, poison the well. Yeah. Like your friends. Like That's another really good tip. Po don't poison the well. Don't talk bad about your ex to the friends because it's only going to reflect badly on you. And it's only going to make the breakup and the animosity worse. Just... Just don't, don't complain, don't just. And by the way, just picture this, that everyone is literally like, oh my God, that person's so amazing. Yes. Like oh, they're just behaving so well and we're all over here and we miss them and we wish they were back and mm -hmm. we wish we weren't caught up in this thing. And yeah. oh my God, rather than thank God they're gone. Yes. They're a toxic person. Yeah. Like exactly. play the part, you will win the game. Exactly. Next question from at Gracie Napier. Do you agree that women can literally smell when their partner is cheating on them? I <laughs> I do believe in a woman's intuition. I do too. I really, really 100%. do. I I really, really do think that it's kind of a sixth sense. I co-sign to say a tinksism. Yeah, it's 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 just a weird tingle. It's just a weird tingle and I've had it. It's brutal. That when you get the tingle, it's impossible to ignore. And this is not a good tingle. It's not a good tingle. It's the opposite. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do. I, I just, I, I don't even know if I have a, a coherent, intelligent answer other than I think it's that witchiness inside all of us that we just are like, mm, something's a little off. I almost every time I suspected it was the case, yeah. I found the evidence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't suggest that people go deep diving mm -hmm. and like invade people's privacy. Um, however, you're probably not likely to get a totally honest answer. So I'm not sure like asking is going to help you find your evidence because the yeah. person could easily just lie, just not tell you the truth and, and, and avoid the confrontation yeah. and just take the lazy road out and just not deal with it. Yeah. Um, because that's probably what they're doing in the first place. Cause my suggestion to anyone who wants to philander is just be free and not committed to someone else. So you are free exactly. and then you're not for philandering. Exactly. But I swear I, it's I, crazy. It's there mm -hmm. is, and you called it intuition. It's like a spidey sense. Yeah, a, it a, t a bad tingle, a, little, mm, a mm. suspicion, a yeah. gut. You know what? People don't acknowledge the gut enough. It's Agree. The heart. It's the head. No. Poetry. Mia, mia, mia. Gut. No, gut instinct is where it's at. And if your yeah. gut is telling you something is off, more times than not. It is. There's something off. Yeah, I love that phrase. Uh, gut feelings are guardian angels, <gasps> and I love that. And I always think about that. So listen to your gut. It's it's so true. And and honestly, our gut and our mind are super connected. And I don't know. I'm just it. There were one system, and your gut, those pangs that you get. Just pay attention to them because sometimes it's true. But don't go through anyone's phone. Yeah, it'll come out. It'll come out. Just be. If you have the spidey sense. Just keep a watch. It always comes out. It does. And please don't go through people's stuff. I don't think that's, mm -mm. you know, a good behavior or anything we're suggesting. And I think if it just continues on and you never feel settled and you always feel like something is awry and nefarious things are at play, maybe it's not the right relationship, Exactly, period. exactly. Because, yes, that's such a good point. If you constantly feel on edge, even if you don't find something or even if it ends up not being true, Drew is right, then that's not your person because you should feel calm and safe and secure with the person that you're with. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, okay, our final question is from at Catherine Bernal, and she wants to know how to navigate making more money than her boyfriend. That's a really interesting one. I know. It's tough. It's tough. 
it's blunt and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. that. Listen, we are out here girl bossing very hard these days and I'm so proud of everyone who is. I think, I think, you know, don't, don't dim your light. Don't be embarrassed. Don't um, try to shine any less brightly. I think it's something to be proud of how much, you know, if you're successful, um, it's tough because I, you know, I don't want to make a sweeping generalization, but I'm going to, the male ego can be a little bit fragile when it comes to that stuff. It, it can, but it doesn't mean you have to change your behavior. And I think if it's the right relationship, your partner should be super supportive of your success and, and think that it's badass that you are, are girl bossing so hard. Um, so yeah, I guess my advice would be don't dim your light and just be mindful of it. I think that's great advice. Do not dim your light. I think that's very empowering and very directional. I'm going to loop us right back to the beginning of the conversation and in storytelling what they consider a payoff. <laughs> I'm going to be able to have one right now. Also, don't get lost in your ego. Why are you competing? I love. That's right. I- Amen. So don't let them dim your light. Be proud of who you are. Do not compete with someone. No. And don't get into your ego. And as you also said, find somebody who at your highest and lowest is there to support you and cheer you on yeah. regardless. I love that. It doesn't matter as long as they're supporting you and you're supporting them and and you're happy. That's what matters. And, and the rest is just extra. Tanks. Damn it. I just love hanging out with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Whether we're on the show together or I'm calling into yours, I just enjoy your wisdoms and your calmness and your attitudes and your high roadness and your fun. And we're all in for it. And I just am so excited to do this now because this is a new field for me. Um, I'm feeling more comfortable on the show. So I thought, you know what? Why not start a new challenge and scare myself yet again and try and get into the podcast world? And getting to do it with you is just so fun and exciting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are a natural and so inspiring. You are just firing on all cylinders right now. And it's very, very cool and inspiring to see. So thank you for having me. I wish you could see my face. I look (laughs) wide-eyed and shocked and grateful at at the encouragement. And um, to everybody out there, thank you so much for listening. Follow the Drew's News podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And, you know, if you like, you can tell someone you know or shout it from a rooftop, you know, or, hey, you could, like, be at a drive through and be like, you know what? I'll take some fries. <laughs> and also, by the way, have you heard the Drew's News podcast? I mean, you could be, like, taking care of your neighbor's pet and, and tell that cat, <laughs> like, hey, if you're bored because you're stuck at home all day, like, there's a podcast you could put on. And, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, Tinks is on the podcast. And so, for me, I think that's worth anybody getting to listen to her and her wisdoms. And be sure to watch, oh God, here's my name, The Drew Barrymore Show, every weekday. And uh, you can go to thedrewbarrymoreshow.com or, you know what, just go to the YouTube channel. Go to the, like, Instagram. Go to the TikTok. Let's face it, who's going to our website anymore? No one. You can find us on your local time and channel. One thing I do suggest, you can go to our website and type in your zip code, and then you can find where our show is on for you. And other than that, ignore it. Okay, thank you, everybody. (laughs) As always, we make this show for you. So take it with you. Thanks, Tinks.